rolling, check. Coming up on Off the Hardwood, Paul Jones visits Raptors forward Morris Peterson at his waterfront pad, where he takes in a Michigan State game, talks about growing up in Flint, winning an NC2A championship, and what's it like trying to guard Michael Jordan. Yes, yes. It's hard watching a game with a guy who has a rooting interest in it and we're, we're watching your team. But Mo, there's another picture over here of a Michigan State team, the national championship team from 2000. Some of these guys in the NBA now, Mateen Cleaves, uh, Jason Richardson. And this is a second chance. What was it like after losing the first time? Well, to tell you the truth, the first time we lost um, in the Final Four, I mean, I cried like, I was, like it was my last game. I mean, all the guys did. We felt like we had worked hard that year, and we felt like we had a chance. But um, it definitely helped us confidence-wise. You know, we, we knew going into the next year that we were going to win it because nobody worked harder than us. What kind of motivation did Tom Izzo give you guys? Well, you know what? I don't even think we really need any motivation. Um, that's the biggest motivation, making it to the Final Four and realizing that we got most of our guys back. We got seniors on the team. You know, um, my team, you know, he stayed. He was going to leave after that year, but he ended up staying. So we knew, we knew we were going, we were going to win from, from day one, from the first practice. Was there uh, talk with some of the former Michigan State great players, you know, Greg Kelser, he's doing this game on TV now, Magic Johnson. What kind of an influence did they have? Well, they had a big influence, you know, you know Greg Kelser, you know, he's, he's always done our games. And he would just talk to us, talk to me, you know, just tell me to go out there and play hard, keep playing, everything will work out. And Magic, you know, he, um, he would give me a call, you know, I would be sitting in my dorm room and he would call you and, hey, what's up, young fella? I'm like, you know, hey, what's up, Magic? You know, I mean, our relationship, you know, outside of basketball with the former players, they're great. You know, Steve Smith, you know, he's a guy I really look up to. And that's how we do now. You know, I, I call those guys all the time and let them know, you know, to keep working hard. You know, when things weren't working out at the beginning of the season, I told them to keep their heads up, call in the office all the time. And they respect that because, you know, they see where I came from and they're trying to get to where I am. And I'm just trying to, Give, give them an open path so they can um, succeed like I'm doing. Mo, who was your favorite player growing up? A lot of guys, you know, coming up, looked at you and Mateen and, and this team, kids in that area. Who was your favorite player growing up? My favorite player I had, well, actually I had three favorite players. And I mean, I'm not being biased because they're from Michigan State. <laughs> <laughs> Magic, you know, I mean, I always looked up to him because Magic, I mean, he did so many things. You know, he didn't have to score all the time. You know, he could pass the ball and make it look, you know, better. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. and um, Steve Smith and um, Isaiah Thomas when he played with the Pistons. I mean, those three guys. I mean, I, I mean, I would, you know, bend over backwards just to, you know, say hi to them when I was younger. You know, if I had a chance to. So, what's it like now when, obviously, you were a Piston fan, being close to Detroit. What's it like now when you go back to play at the Palace of Auburn Hills, a place where you watch? you know, championship series and trophies being presented. What's it like going back to play there? Oh, it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, I get a big ovation, though, when I go back, when they introduce my name last game. I felt like I was at home, you know <laughs> what I mean? I mean they, they always welcome me back with open arms, and that's why whenever I go home, and, you know, the kids and stuff, everybody wants me to sign an autograph. I stayed there all day before the game and signed all the autographs because, I mean, they showed the appreciation when I was at Michigan State, and um, I just feel, you know, we're all like family. All right, well, Mo, the game's on. Let's go sit down and check out the game and see how your Spartans are doing. See, you, got, you have to have the snacks when you're watching the game. When you're watching the Michigan State game, you know, see, I got the cookies, you know, the Pepsi, the you know, to Tostitos with the salsa, you know, just sit back, relax, watch the game, enjoy it, you know. You, you know, you can feel free to, to dig in all if right, you want I will. to. But, I you will. know, you can't eat it all up, though. Why you not? have a couple, man, because, you know, I got to eat. I got to <laughs> get ready for the game. <laughs> Michigan State Spartans. Now, Mo, 
you guys have this thing happening between Flint and Michigan State University. It seems to be uh, some kind of pipeline happening from, from Flint downstate to East Lansing. Yeah. Um, you know, it started with Antonio Smith. Um, you know, he opened the doors. You know, um, he was the first guy to commit. You know, we came out the same year, but he was the first guy to commit, and, you know, Michigan State was recruiting me. So he, he's like, you know, let's, you know, let's make this happen. You know, my team coming the next year. You know, we had um, a guy from our high school that graduated a couple years before me um, named Anthony Moore. He went to a junior college, so he was going there. So, and all, all, he had, all, all Antonio do, had to do was just tell me, you know, ask me. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to Michigan State. So you go from Flint to East Lansing to Michigan State, and then now you jump to the NBA. Rookie season, big jump, but you have an advantage because you're a five-year player or a five-year uh, college person. Was it, were you disappointed draft day when some of the guys who didn't have as much college experience as you did were drafted before you? Well, I was a little disappointed. But, um, one thing I never wanted to do was get caught up in, you know, what people would say, how high, you know, you get drafted and things like that. You know, they were, they were predicting me to be a lottery pick and I never listened to it because you never know what can happen on, um, on draft day. You know, some teams like to go young, some teams like um, players with more experience. Just different things go on. It's always crazy. So, I, mean, I was a little disappointed, but when I found out I was coming to Toronto, I was excited. Take us back to draft day. What was it like when you found, when you heard your name called and you, you started to make your way toward the stage and, and then you realized, I mean, you're going to Toronto and you're going to be playing with Vince Carter? Um, I was excited. When they called my name, you know, I... You know, put the hat on, walked up, you know, walked up, shook David Stern's hand. And I mean, that's one of the most memorable uh, moments, you know. I mean, because not too many people get an opportunity to get drafted and get to walk on that stage. And, you know, I just feel blessed. And, you know, then to find out and I was going to be playing with, you know, guys like Vince Carter and Antonio Davis. You know, those guys and, you know, and Charles Oakley when he was here. Um, I thought it was going to be work to my advantage because, you know, those guys, you know, are great players. They work hard. And I was just excited on um, getting, you know, trying to get on the court. The, the first year you come to Toronto as a rookie, and you, I noticed your locker is right beside Vince's. What kind of an influence did he have on you? And you talked about some of the other veterans, too. Talk about them helping you out. Well, from day one, you know, Vince, you know, kind of took me up on his wing. Um, he came to training camp, you know, um, right, coming right over from the Olympics. So, you know, first day in training camp, I mean, he's over there talking to me, helping me out, d defense situations, doing stuff. And I mean, from day one, you know, we kind of clicked. And, you know, we just kept, kept it going from there. I mean, even Antonio, you know, in the summertime, when I came down for a couple of days, he was here. And he come up with, what's up? He called me Maurice, though. <laughs> he said, what's up, Maurice? I still tease him about that, too. But um, he gave me his number, like, you know, you need anything, call me. I mean, I, I think that, that really helped me out. This year, you had a chance to play against Michael Jordan. I mean, cover him straight up, one-on-one, -on -one, you and Michael. You got to let us in on what that felt like. Well, it wasn't easy, I can tell you that. Um, you can't touch that. You can't touch that guy. I'm sorry. <laughs> you can't touch him. I mean, I, remember, I mean, he's a great player, and I really respect him because he works hard, and he's made you know, the Washington, Washington team a lot better. And... Um, but, you know, I, I can remember one instance when I was on the court and I got up on, close to him. I mean, like, you know, I was playing defense on him because I think he had scored a couple of times. And the ref looked at me and was like, get off of him, bag up. <laughs> and me and Coach Wilkins were on the side like, huh? You know what I mean? We were just puzzled because, I mean, you can't touch him. But, I mean, I guess that's what happens when you, you know, your guy is the best player. Well, earning some respect, and last year you certainly earned some respect as a member of the all-rookie team, were you surprised that you were able to progress that quickly? Well, I worked hard, and I felt like, you know, if I work hard, you know, all the other individual things will come. And I mean, I think I earned it, and I think that, I'm, you know, I'm on the path of where I want to be. You know, that was one of my goals. It was to make the make the all-rookie team and. You know, make playing the rookie all-star game and you know, achieve some of my goals. All right. Well, your boys seem to have. Uh pulled away a little here. I, I noticed you trying to yes. kind of keep an eye on things. Them Spartans, that's the Flint, Flint product right there. Scoring, doing little things, getting excited like that. How hard is it for you to watch these guys play? How hard? How hard is it knowing that, I mean, you, I mean your heart is still there in a sense. How hard is that? 
Well, I mean, actually, you know, I, I mean, I feel comfortable with those guys out there. You know, coach has done a great job with them. Um, you know, sometimes I think back, like, man, what if I had one more year in college? You know, <laughs> I mean, I think every player does that. You know, your college days, I mean, are your, you know, they say are your best days of your life. So, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm having fun where I am. Right? Do you think, Mo, you had an advantage over some of the guys that didn't have a college life, guys like Darius Miles, uh, people that were drafted in front of you? Do, do you see yourself with an advantage over some of those guys? I think so. I think it helped me not more, you know, uh, I think, you know, me going to college and has helped me more mentally, you know, physically also, but more mentally helped me prepare for games more, you know, better. And, you know, as opposed to guys who coming out of high school, they're not really ready mentally. So, I mean, in that aspect, I think, you know, that, I mean, for me personally, that was the best choice for me, you know, as far as staying in school. But I talked to my cousin, Jonathan Bender, a lot, and you know, sometimes he says, man, you know, what if I ever went to college for a year, you know? I mean, he he kind of wonders, you know, how it would have been if he would have went to college. So we talk about that sometimes. If you just glance at it, it looks real. I, oh, man, you missed it. <laughs> I had this guy running around my place talking about, man, Mo, quit playing. I, I, I don't like snakes. I don't like snakes. I'm not a snake person. <laughs>